The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we're back into the breach, dear friends. We're off almost 17 points on the S&P cash, uh, hovering kind of close uh, to the lows of the day. Out here, in fact, uh, let me update this so I can tell you what the low of the day was, is, and uh, what do we got? Uh, 2054 on the S&P cash. Volume, though, uh, had been pretty much light all day. And I've probably seen three different or four different signals that said a bottom was in, only uh, to see... 30 minutes later, an hour later, uh, to those once again it get erased. And uh, it not, it's not like I think that there's a great deal left in this market to the downside. So I am uh, and did uh, err on the side of caution and pick up my, uh, my toys and go home. I made some decent uh, earnings in the daily newsletter. I still can't see a general long-term movement, maybe until after Christmas. But uh, on the short side or on the long side, maybe these trades are just going to be a little bit uh, tougher to get. Now, of course, yesterday we had Veterans Day. A lot of people were off. I'm kind of thinking maybe we're continuing to see some options expiration movement just because of the way that the trades are going off here today. Also, we should see the VIX, by my calculations, uh, already have hit 18, and it has not. That tells me that option market makers are uh, are not selling options with the kind of premium that would say there is some uh, significant downside uh, left to go. So if, uh, if they thought the market was going to be falling off a cliff here, uh, we'd see that VIX number much, much higher. We are not. And that tells me that we are going to have a narrower trading range through expiration a week from tomorrow. And in the meantime, um, you know, maybe 16 point, 17 point or 20 point day may be a big day for us on the upside and downside. Um, but uh, to tell you the truth, we're kind of an in a market that is being tugged on two different ways. A lot of uh, folks, in fact, those folks in the, uh, in the uh, Wall Street firms would probably just be happy if the market closes out where it's at now. Uh, they're kind of just hoping uh, that uh, everything, uh, they can whistle into the end of the year and really into the 1st of December um, where uh, their paychecks will be fixed. Actually, some of the paychecks get fixed in November, but some of them as far as uh, December 1st. And they're looking for that Christmas bonus. But we've got a tale of two stocks, and that is the stocks that have been doing well, more people piling into them so they do better and they get paid more on it. On the opposite side, we have the losing stocks, and those are people that are selling them for tax reasons or just they're just disgusted with them. Um, and... To me, I don't see the market moving a great deal, but I think we have an opportunity over the next few weeks to see big movement and continued movement down in stocks uh, that have been beat up this year. In fact, I think GoPro went below its IPO price today. I'll have to take a look at that again. We'll look at it soon. Uh, we've had other stocks, of course, continue to rally. It is feast or famine. And, of course, there's a handful of those stocks that have been pushed up the highest. And, of course, they're getting all the love from the folks that are in them already because, guess what? they got to keep them up and, uh, until that clock runs out. they gotta get that, uh, they got to get that big bonus this year. And uh, don't worry about the next bonus next year because 
There may not ever be a next year. You always play for this year. It's not like you're trying to figure out uh, how to make everything smooth out over a number of years. It's all about uh, kind of all or nothing on Wall Street, uh, a hero or a zero. In the meantime, it's time to get started and kick this show off. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Anyway, uh, what do we got going on here today? Oh, in 1901, J.P. Morgan and James J. Hill formed the Northern Securities Company to hold the stock of the Northern Pacific and Great Northern Railways, one of the high water marks of the monopolistic robber baron era. Within four years, the U.S. Supreme Court will declare Northern Securities in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, and the company will be broken up. And this is one of the most significant uh, events in market history. Uh, so much so that I bought the book on it, Herman versus Hill. And it uh, talks a great deal about it. But one of the other reasons that uh, I got into it is it gives a real inner view of how these barons of Wall Street think, uh, especially when they're masters of all that they survey. And uh, i also be able to see how traders at the same time uh, traded around it. And in fact, uh, there's uh, several, I think a couple of chapters about Jesse Livermore in his book, trading uh, why they were in there. In fact, uh, he got wiped out just before everything went his way. And uh, he built up, uh, so in 1901, he built up a whole bunch of cash, got rid of it all in a single day because he, uh, the, he was too far away from the market. He was lagging too far. Uh, he wasn't in town. And that was when he decided that he had to go and be on the big board and be able to walk in right there where they were trading so that there wasn't a whole time delay between it. And uh, I guess that was the idea of the high-frequency trader in 1901. But uh, a great book, uh, very interesting, and uh, eh, something I took an interest in. I think uh, anybody that trades long enough, if uh, they can always um, always learn by reading things. Everything changes, uh, but uh, for the most part, it stays the same. Uh, maybe a theme, maybe the names have been changed to protect the innocent and or guilty. But uh, on this day in 1901, one of the biggest movements and uh, market manipulations ever as uh, two of the biggest guys in the world fight over the last little bit of railway that would make monopolies uh, for all of them. In the end, uh, they divvied it all up, and uh, that's what uh, the Sherman Antitrust Act actually went against. But... Uh, Interestingly, none, interesting to me, nonetheless. Uh, we had some people ask in the day, and I already had this chart up, so I already had the answer. I'd already put it together this morning when I'd seen it. Rolls-Royce, now don't confuse them with a car company. Those two had split a long time ago. But Rolls-Royce jet engines uh, said it would, profits at the end would be uh, the low end of expectation. Why next year it would face $650 million of headwinds, more than previously forecast. Rolls-Royce is carrying out a new review of its business, which is said likely to involve job losses among its 2,000 senior managers. Now, they are off almost 20%, and it's an English company, and I don't think it trades here, maybe on an ADR, but it's off uh, 20% uh, on the uh, London Stock Exchange. And the question is, why are they having such problems when it doesn't look like Boeing, although I haven't looked at them. In fact, we ought to pop them up real quick. Why is it that Boeing and General Electric engines are not having the same kind of uh, problem? Come on. Keep getting this thing that says time out. There it is. Oh, now I've added it four times. Uh, it's uh, Boeing's off eh, two bucks, but I think you can say that that has more to do with the market today. Two bucks, uh, nothing, but it's uh, stayed up here. Anyway, uh, we talked about it, and I, I stated in the den that one of the reasons was that General Electric engines, uh, they've been working on fuel efficiency just massively uh, to a fault, 
in those engines. And part of that has made the GE engines for the same uh, horsepower and thrust about 4% more efficient. Uh, when you put that together, together with Boeing's ability to make their planes more efficient, literally the combination of a um, plane from uh, Boeing and the GE jet engines can get up to 10% more efficient than, Bo uh, than Airbus planes with uh, the uh, um, Rolls-Royce engines. So not a problem with the engines, just efficiency. And of course, if you think about a, uh, they measure fuel in pounds uh, in big jets uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but when you think, uh, whatever it is, six or eight pounds per gallon, you've got to actually think why they do it. Well, part of it is liftoff weight. If you want everybody always thinking at least how heavy the plane is, can it get off the ground? But if you think about, you know, having 70 thousand pounds or a hundred thousand pounds of fuel and you get four percent that's four thousand pounds of fuel that you didn't have to pay for and uh, if it's way I think when I remember it was something like 80 percent or 90 80 85 percent of all fees that you pay to fly an airline have to do with fuel I'll have to go back and look at that one that may not be right but it's pretty close there's a huge amount uh, so if they save money on fuel, uh, that is the best money that they can save. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a naysayer in the den. A naysayer who does not believe that uh, Boeing is better. Uh, yeah, they've uh, been able to do a great deal of modeling. In fact, uh, it is, in, especially in MIT, um, they are doing something called genetic algorithms, and those genetic algorithms uh, via computers have vastly updated the uh, fuel efficiency of the planes. And if you want to think about genetic algorithms, um, they can and do exactly what uh, it does in real life. That is, they just keep trying different things. Is this better? Is this worse? Is this better or this worse? And you can change the uh, curve of the blade or how far the engine nacelle is up a little bit. Um, you know, you can try a lot of different things and just keep on trying them. And, you know, if it's a little better, you keep it. If it's a little worse, you get rid of it. And it's uh, eventually a uh, survivist of the fittest. But they continue working on balance on the plane, um, all kinds of uh, inputs and changes to develop the plane. And uh, that technique, they credit, and actually there's a lot of papers about it, uh, probably is the difference between what Boeing and Airbus and uh, GE and, of course, what uh, Rolls-Royce have in the difference. We'll be back in a minute. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger 
TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And we're back. Uh, it is uh, kind of an interesting story. We had a few questions in the den, and that is can they make a plain bomb proof? The answer is no. Uh, I don't think so, uh, but uh, they do have containers. One of my friends works for uh, FedEx, and uh, they load containers all the time in those big planes for transport. And uh, some of them uh, are, um, I, I guess, as long as the entire thing wasn't filled with fertilizer and diesel fuel, would survive a medium-type explosion. So if someone sent something, it wouldn't probably, the whole thing would have to be a bomb, which I think a lot of people would probably figure out already. What is this thing that you're shipping that's 9 million tons? It's got to be full of something. Uh, but uh, it's pretty tough to do that. But um, that's it. Um, eh, what else did we have? Uh, da, 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 da. 23 and me. have I ever heard of the company? The answer is yes. I've written about it uh, ad nauseum in the Tech Insider. Uh, my subscribers will have gotten that. Probably the most interesting thing about 23andMe uh, is that the CEO of that company used to be married to the head of, of Google, and they split. They used to be husband and wife, and it was kind of funny to see them Sunday night in the uh, giant giveaway that uh, is going to probably in the near, I, I imagine in the near, 
near uh, maybe two or three years, it's probably going to be more famous than the Nobel Prize. Uh, they gave away all that money. We talked about it on Monday uh, from Google and Facebook uh, and all the founders got together. But they gave away, what, 20, what did I say, 24 million bucks. But uh, she was there standing next to a recipient with her ex-husband on the other side. Um, one can only think of who they showed up with uh, and uh, how that went down. But, uh, yeah. Um, in fact, I always thought that maybe she was getting a little easy ride because everybody knew her husband work, uh, ran Google and didn't want to tick him off. And once she got uh, divorced from him, uh, they came after her. Anyway, uh, 23andMe, very interesting DA, DNA company. Yeah, Sergi Bren. Bren. Uh, again, we take phone calls at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, send me emails now, not the last two minutes of the show, at path at tfnn.com. Other things going on, uh, Fresh Pet, um, there have been a ton of of horrible IPOs in the last uh, year or two. Fresh Pet is off a 25%. Cut its uh, 2015 outlook. And of course, this is one of the other, I one of, I think, two or three pet food companies that went public because, of course, there just isn't enough pet food in the world. Is there for our little darlings? Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, mine get dry food and they like it. And uh, they eat it when they get hungry, they don't eat it when they're not hungry. But, uh, um, you know, uh, it was down 16% off 25% uh, uh, today. And I don't know what else you can say about it other than uh, there are a ton of those stocks. As a follow-up to what we talked about uh, yesterday and the day before about uh, Alibaba, uh, a good discussion uh, that you may want to look up, one of the few, uh, that you may want to look up on CNBC today. Uh, as a guest, they had Herb Greenberg, who's now running a research agency. He does not invest either long or short in the names he covers, uh, any of them. Uh, but uh, he has come down on the side, definitively on the side, of those that say Alibaba probably has uh, Enron and other type uh off the bookshelf, uh, off the bookshelf, off the books, uh, problems. Uh, these are all hidden in a thing called a variable interest entity. But anyway, uh, he went through a litany of them today. And uh, I continue to say that uh, if you want trouble, uh, just make sure that you uh, hang on uh, to, of course, uh, those Chinese stocks. You know, he basically was talking to other people that were long the stock, and they go, you know, you're long it. It's probably not going to blow up in the next week or two. So your trade can be fine. You can tell everybody. In fact, they'll probably forget about this in two or three months. But uh, as we said yesterday, uh, the odds of their books being true are probably the equivalent of a home run hitter that uh, can hit, uh, I don't know, 950 each year. Um, statistically, hugely improbable um but uh, he also brought up some of the other companies we'll get into it uh, the company he brought up and uh, the result of that last week when we come back Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. 
Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio and hedge against the falling stock market, consider the new Market Safe Metals Hedge CD from EverBank. This five year indexed US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to metals with gold and silver components and allows you to hedge against falling equities with a shot component on the SPY ETF. You can earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if gold and silver increase in value and the SPY ETF decreases across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Don't let fallen markets get you down. Get the Metals Hedge CD. The November 12th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off 17 points on the S&P cash, 2.56 billion shares. This is where the afternoon, it's gotten very, very light in trading. And uh, the last few days anyway. And uh, today is no difference. We'll watch it. 2.57 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape right now. Um, I'm saying it's kind of a coin flip here uh, on whether or not we can get any lower out of this market. Uh, through expiration and what I look at in the charts, um, I was thinking we might be able to get down to 2040 on the S&P cash. But uh, to me, it was uh, I was sitting on a pretty big uh, win on at least one of our trades. So I decided to go ahead and take the cash. But um, uh, sometimes it just becomes a bet other than intelligent speculation. And uh, as the old saying goes, when in doubt, get out. And uh, I've got a lot of doubts right now. I think we can make more money uh, on options and uh, uh, trades next week uh, on short-term trades other than long-term trades now. Just think it's going to get kind of bouncy 
and also uh, that tax selling probably a whole lot, uh, help out on individual stocks. Anyway, we were talking before we left about Chinese stocks. I like Chinese. I like yes, Chinese. I like them, but I don't like their stocks because, of course, we can't ever find out what's truly going on in there to continue our uh, conversations. Uh, we will uh, uh, talk about ICON because this is one of these stocks from China that had to restate everything. Because, of course, uh, eventually uh, the truth will come out, as uh, Mr. Buffett is fond of saying. Uh, you, uh, when the tide goes out, you'll see who is swimming without their bathing suit. And Iconics was another one of these Chinese companies. And, of course, everybody had checked them out on their IPO. Everybody had done everything they, they could. But uh, whether it's Alibaba or whether it's Iconics or whether it's a bunch of other companies out there in China... You have zero visibility, and I can't say that they are worth investing in. On the long side, I might be uh, short. Uh, some other comments in there that, uh, of course, uh, Herb Greenberg is a bear on everything he meets. The answer is probably no, but the question of his research that he sell is for the bearish cause, because if all the books are fine, there's nothing to report. Um, but um, other than that, it's exciting. Uh, anyway, a pretty good argument uh, that you can probably find on CNBC's website if you want to go through it. But uh, he did bring up Iconics because uh, there are more and more of these every uh, few weeks now where we're really seeing the uh, truth of the matter uh, come out in these Chinese companies. So uh, I don't know what else you can say about that. We had a couple other questions out here. Uh, the first was, is there any way to play the driverless car theme? Uh, another thing I've actually covered uh, on uh, and in the uh, Tech Insider, um, and uh, the answer, short answer is no. Um, there is a company that builds the laser systems uh, that I've uh, talked about in it, and if they ever go public, uh, maybe that would be one way to do it. Is there any specialized semiconductor uh, that really would profit from it? The answer is probably no on that either. Uh, the truth of the matter on all these self-driving cars is the laser system. And one of the reasons why I don't think that these self-driving cars are going to go very far, very fast, it's about 30 grand just for the laser systems. And it's not going to be like volume is going to make that significantly go lower. Um, and for 30 grand, I can drive myself. I can, uh, hell, I can drive, I can call Uber people to drive me for 30 grand for a long time not have to worry about anything if you want to if you want to not drive just call uber it seems to me uh the idea of having your own car make only makes sense if you want to drive it so uber makes a much more sense to me than a self-driving car but just my thoughts uh dave if oil goes lower will the market follow and at this point i don't think so um i'm thinking that uh right now uh, from what I can tell, the market's going lower anyway. But uh, from what I can tell, it certainly looks like at least the big guys of Wall Street are not thinking uh, that that either one happens and or two are selling uh, options and uh, other things that really make me think that uh, there's that much left to go. Like I said, uh, maybe 16 points to the downside left. Maybe we see that tomorrow. Uh, but uh, probably not a great deal left as far as I can tell. Polar service economy in China is going bang, but that's great. Soon, uh, yeah, another stock that I can tell you I told you so in the sector. Can you, uh, can you use Uber if you don't have a smartphone? Yes, I think you can just use a regular phone, although it will tell you... Um, mm -hmm. That's a good question. Do you have to have a smartphone? I think you do. I think you have to use their app, right? I've never used it, so I, I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, I think you got to have your app. But it also tells you where it comes from. And I don't know why that's a problem because uh, for $30 or $15, in fact, here, here's a phone I bought for $10. I'm showing you right here. It's an LG uh, VS. 
450. I bought it for 10 bucks, brand new. Uh, actually, it had a 32 gig uh, um, uh, card in it already, and I'm never going to use it uh, on uh, on the cell system. I'm going to do nothing but load up apps uh, from Android in it and uh, use it as a standalone. So, uh, you know, if you just had a smartphone that you bought for 10 bucks, you put the Uber app on it and used Wi-Fi, you could live with it that way. Uh, good protection for the Uber driver because you can identify passengers. Huh. Never thought about it. Uh, anyway, we're going to start looking at some stocks out here. You still have plenty of time to give me a call. And, uh, yeah, 2055 on the S&P cash, down 20. Um, let's take a quick look. I wanted to see how some of these stocks were breaking in the housing sector. Um, we've had a pretty good signal. I think we've got a top. question is whether or not anybody's going to sell these off before the end of the year. A.O. Smith, of course, the maker of water heaters I've been watching closely, uh, tested its previous high on July 23rd uh, with half the volume on November 6th. That day, you had basically a million shares. It's kind of pulled back but hung out up at these highs. Um, you had some good volume off that August 24th low where it got back up here, but uh, energy's kind of tailing off a little bit, but no clear signal on those so far. Now, banks a little bit better. Now, this one uh, only came up with almost a fourth, a little over a fourth of the volume. Bank uh, Corp South BK, uh, BXS, excuse me, uh, June 26th, $26.68, had 2 million shares, tested it on November 6th, and uh, it's back into the trading range now. Um, and this is a good sign of what I'm looking at, and that is that you did have tests of lows, may not have pierced them, but certainly did it on significantly lighter volume. The August 25th low in Bank uh, Corp South had 1.3 million shares. You tested October 2nd with uh, 860,000 shares, pretty far into that candle being 500,000 uh, shares light. So you're back up in the top. But uh, for a lot of times, it certainly looks like uh, there's a lot of reason to think that uh, there's some trading ranges setting up in these stocks. Casey's General Store was another one that's kind of up here on light volume. September 9th spiked 740,000 shares. It uh, dime under uh, 115, went to 115.61 uh, yesterday and set the high reversed back into it. But uh, today, again, very light volume. And that's where I would like to see some of these stocks that have tested their highs on lighter volume pull down and actually start getting some volume. That's what continues to make uh, probably significant downside for me troublesome. I'd like to see some of these stocks continue to break. Red Hat, another stock up here that's tested its high. And... Uh, you know, kind of had a little bounce. I think part of that was their deal with Microsoft uh, a few days ago, June 19th, $81.49 with uh, 4.6 million shares. Got into that on November 5th with 2 million shares, and it's pulled back. But let's just look at that volume here uh, since it hit that peak. It's not like these stocks at the highs are really starting to roll over. And that, again... These stocks that are, of course, up here at the highs are the stocks that made the indexes up at the highs. So I continue to think why there may be a little bit more downside. The question is, does it just open at 2040 in the morning, give you two seconds to cover and then pop right back up? Um, I think that that's a capability or we never get to 2040 during expiration. Um, but I'm thinking that we've got a market that probably not going to have a great deal of movement, at least through the next uh, six trading days. Uh, SNA, Snap-on Tools. I thought this was a very interesting stock to come up here and test a volume on lighter, um, or test a top on lighter volume. One of the reasons, of course, is just how strong the, and to tell you the truth, the, as a thought of, as a play on auto parts, if auto parts are selling a great deal, the mechanics have to be putting them on, and they've got to be buying tools. So probably not a bad play out here. Now, the volume wasn't that light. It was about 20% light, but was a light, did pierce the top, and uh, closed back 
uh, below the previous high of August 18th that had uh, 490,000 shares with 380,000 shares. So a significant volume and not the kind that would make me go short, but uh, enough to make me think that maybe the highs are in in the market. And also maybe we've got lows in on the market, although I may be proved wrong here if uh, this thing continues to drift lower uh, the rest of the day. Uh, to, to do what else do we have? VLO, another one uh, that has tested its high back in its trading range, uh, especially with way it the oil's doing. You'd think with a plethora of oil everywhere that uh, Valero would be uh, rocking the Casbah. It's certainly coming back on light volume the last four or five days, but uh, it did test the August 13th high, $71.50. 8.9 million shares, got into it with 6.6 .6 million shares, couldn't hold it up there right back into the trading range. But it's not like the energy. In fact, the last energy in the last leg was very good. It's just uh, I think that if we're looking at any of these stocks, either breaking down or breaking out, maybe we've seen the best that this uh, year has had. Maybe it hangs up around here at the beginning of the year and then breaks out uh, on something like uh, Valero, which is... Uh, of course, a uh, play for uh, uh, crack, uh, uh, crack spreads. But, uh, you know, what I dislike about thinking this thing's going lower is just looking at the volume since this thing hit the high. Every day it's become less. Even it was up a little yesterday, but volume is just, you know, 3 million shares yesterday compared to 6.6 .6 at the high. We're not getting any kind of severe pullback yet. And uh, I'm thinking that we could see narrowing trading ranges as we go along. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me as uh, Dan has. Hello, David. I'm looking at BBY as a short. BBY. Uh, I have taken a position due to the upcoming retail season. What are your thoughts on uh, shorting particular retail stocks going forward at the end of the year? Um, I continue to think Best Buy has issues. The problem is, what are they going to include? And if I'm not mistaken, Best Buy always has their earnings like the first week of December. So you've got to go through Thanksgiving before it is probably clear on whether or not you're going to be right or wrong on them. Well, November 19th. So what do we got? It's a week from now. It used to be uh, out there. Uh, da -da -da. Uh. Uh, my engineer wants to know why you just couldn't call Uber. And I think the reason is they don't want to pay people to route them to your house. I think everything's done with a computer. So they don't have to have a dispatcher. Uh, everybody, you know, you say, hey, I want to go from here to there. Then uh, the Uber people put the, puts that out to all the drivers. And everybody bids and who's closest and everything else. And then they figure out who they send to your house or wherever you're at. But uh, I think that's the reason why it has to all be, you know, you'd have to enter it all. And it's just cheaper to have somebody do it on their own phone. But again, I've never used it. But uh, yeah, I'm wondering if you could use a smartphone, but one that was hooked up via uh, Wi-Fi instead of one that was actually on a cell system. I don't think it could really know the difference. Yeah, maybe it could, maybe it couldn't. Uh, anyway. So we're back to Best Buy and Dan's question on it. Um, you know, it's pulling back. I don't know what he, he didn't say where he was short on this. The problem now, though, is that you're back in into the candles where this thing broke out at 825. My guess is that right now is that it will probably do okay. There's enough new products um, that they'll do okay. Um but my guess is uh, this is a short at the v maybe right after the first of the year, maybe right after Christmas. Anyway, we'll be back in just a minute. Thanks for the email, Dan. But we don't know where he's from.
EFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. We're going to look at some of us, see how some of the stocks that we've looked at in the last couple of days have done in the last few minutes. Of course, uh, we've got the one and only Tom O'Brien. It's Thursday, so we'll have Andy Heck uh, as a visitor in the uh, 3 o'clock hour. I'm sure maybe he'll have some answers for us on crude um, and what's happening with all those ships circling the Gulf full of crude. Uh, and if there's any more storage, maybe those stories are true or not. Um, da, da, da. yeah, and then Andy after that. So maybe we'll hear a little bit of 
all of that before the close of today. Um, just uh, wanted to see how some of these had done. ADM had kind of broken its low, and I wanted to see if a volume had actually picked up. Thing actually came through with some volume, and wanted to see as this thing had broken lows, if it had and was starting to pick up volume. It is today actually one of these, and uh, we talked about this one going back even farther, where the next low on this. Uh, comes at your $37.92 level from February 5th of 2014. Uh, and uh, it's kind of interesting to think that somebody like uh, Archer Daniels Midland Supermarket to the world um, couldn't be doing well with uh, what I guess is fairly cheap food prices. But um, I don't know how they work. Uh, we talked about A.O. Smith. Uh, we talked about Casey's. I want to talk about EA. Of course, uh, these games are coming out fast and uh, quickly. And uh, I had a few questions of whether or not I was playing Fallout 4 last night. And the answer is yes. I got two hours in, and it may be one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it is incredibly fun. And uh, I guess I won't get any more chances to work on it until to play on it, I guess, until this weekend. Maybe I'll get a few more hours set up side but of course a lot of these companies with uh, big uh, games coming out this fall electronic arts hits it, it's high made a pretty good signal um that it wasn't going higher at least anytime soon uh tested its august 5th high at five dollars or it uh, excuse me 75 dollars 76 cents went to 76.92 i think we talked about it last week uh did have on earnings kind of that hard day down been kind of meandering it around here a little lower, uh, but uh, kind of hard to see that this thing really had any follow through other than the one day and uh, even up on today. So that may tell you a little bit. Of course, the uh, market looks like the wheels falling off the wagon uh, down 24 points on the S&P cash, but volume is not picking up 1.74 billion shares. So either something has broken my volume well, we're having a vol very uh, low volume crash uh, in the last five, 10 minutes. So, uh, well, we would, let's see, what do we do? We would uh, 2.57. So we've done about 200 million shares in 30 minutes as we close the show here today. Uh, looks to me like volume is going to be probably too low. So uh, my thought is we probably need to be looking at the possibility of a bounce uh, maybe not tomorrow, maybe Monday, maybe next week. Uh, but it uh, doesn't look like there's that much more below us, uh, at least uh, if we're looking at the volume here. I'm thinking that we probably need somewhere around in the neighborhood of about 4 billion shares uh, to really get uh, a blow off. And maybe we get it uh, and blow out those lows. But uh, right now, we are not getting it. As always, we like to say, so when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Hang on for the one and only Tom O'Brien on most of TFNN. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Thank <laughs> you.
You're watching Tiger TV.